top speed discipline has always been a kind of a progress recording sport that existed in motorsport ever since it is a sport. One may not like the simple concept of that, but everybody enjoys the acceleration of a fast automobile. There were dozens of fastest production top speed attempts and sometimes one adept gets a bit more attention. The story of Roof is more than just a few fast numbers. Roof as a company was founded in 1939 by Alois Roof Sr. The firm was involved in the automotive business and his son Alois Roof Jr. started restoring and repairing old Porsches in his father's garage in the 60s. In 1974, he took control of Roof Automobile after his father's death and continued his passion for Porsches. The first Roof Improved Porsche showed up in 1977 based on a 911, but back in the day nobody genuinely knew what roof was, nor that any roof even exists. A week later my dad buys the salvage. He bought the broken car that was beat up all over and he fixed it and brought it back in brand new condition. Of course I was involved and my older brother at that time, we were all enthusiastic. This is when the enthusiasm of, for, for the Porsche automobile actually started in our company. At the time, Roof addressed a few 911 problems and fixed them. They found a 3 liter Carrera underpowered and managed to squeeze 37 horsepower more not only by increasing its displacement to 3.2 liters. Also, the 930 Turbo's 4 speed transmission was a weak element of the car and Roof responded to customers by developing a custom, more pleasing and stronger 5 speed manual. However, the car that managed to gain some reputation for Roof was about to come soon after. And in the 1960s, we continued. We wanted to do another one and another one. We were known as the Porsche specialist that wouldn't fear any type of complicated repair, maintenance, be it in the body works or be it in the mechanical side. The Porsche 911 is a beta-like looking Cooper sports car powered by a flat six-cylinder and as Roof has basically been using the same concept, they had to be creative to stand out. Based on a 911 3.2 or 930 Turbo, the Roof BTR came into life in 1983 using either a narrow or factory widebody. The BTR, acronym for Group B Turbo Roof, was powered by a reworked turbo engine, bored out to 3.4 liters, carrying the air-cooled concept. Using special roof bits and pieces in order to outperform the factory model, larger Mahler pistons, different 935 type camshafts, a bigger triple K turbocharger and a roof intercooler were installed. The roof BTR cranked out 374 horsepower and 480 Nm of torque gaining much bigger muscles compared to the 930 turbo. Equipped with a 5 speed dogleg gearbox, the narrow-body BTR had less drag and ability to hit 305 km power, over 20 km power faster than the 911 Turbo. A 6-speed was optional and only 20 to 30 BTRs were manufactured altogether. It was a special car in every way, being modified inside out. Powerful, good-looking and with great handling, having 6 horsepower less it was strong enough to overtake a Lamborghini Countach LP500S and bring home a title as the fastest production car of the time. The BTR was basically the first Porsche, kind of, to achieve this status. Although it didn't take long for the Stuttgart-based automaker to grab the title by itself. Shortly, the Porsche 959 came out into showrooms, unleashed with a four-wheel drive system and a stable of 450 horses. The 959 became the fastest car for a brief period of time. The BTR was ridiculously fast and even two other more powerful models were made a decade later. The BTR 3.8 and BTR2. Mm -hmm. 
Rook began working on a sibling model meant for an unripe top speed and extraordinary performance. The initial design was meant to have a flat nose, however the decision was reverted back to the original 911 shape to avoid confusion with the new Porsche 959. Initially, a 945 model name was suggested to mark the 450 horsepower in a 911 body. Anyway, it eventually ended up as the roof CTR, the Group C Turbo roof, based on a lighter and stiffer newer Carrera 3.2 rather than the older 930. The CTR received a further weight reduction of 200 kg thanks to aluminum body parts. The new car was equipped with roof design bumpers. The body was strengthened on critical points as well as suspension mounting places, and extra care was placed in improving aerodynamics. A 3.2 litre engine received heavy modifications to take larger 98mm pistons, two sizable turbochargers and a top mounted intercooler. Oil lubrication was improved and Bosch fuel injection was a carryover from the Porsche 962 race car. Accommodating single overhead cam and air cooling, the new 3.4 litre engine put out at least 469 horsepower and 553 Nm of torque to the rear wheels only, although dyno tests showed figures close to or even over the 500 horsepower mark. It used the row 5 speed, although a 6 speed was offered later too, able to be retrofitted as well. Tipping the scales at 1150 kg, the CTI was incredibly capable not only in a straight line performance, but was very fast and had good handling even in the twisties. Out on public roads, the Yellowbird is an extraordinary equipment for high-speed touring. It's tight, well-finished, easy to drive. The front end retains that lightweight feel, while the rear-biased weight balance gives itself away in heavy cornering. Tested by various automobile magazines, the Yellowbird became the fastest car of the 1980s, capable of 340 to 346 km per hour. Neither Porsche 959 Ferrari F40 nor Lamborghini Countach could come close. It was the roof's first twin-turbo model, which managed to achieve huge recognition and respect for the company. Only 29 cars were made, and then another 30 customer cars were rebuilt later to satisfy the demand, which means the car remains extremely precious. In 2017, the second generation was born, but carrying a 710 horsepower engine and being capable of 360 km power, there is no comparison between the two. One of the reasons the Yellowbird is so renowned has been the video footage of factory test driver Stefan Rosa, who drove the Nürburgring times for advertisement purposes, given to customers and business partners on a VHS. It might also be noted that the writers of Road and Track gave it the Yellowbird nickname, as the yellow CTR shone brightly as a contrast against the overcast skies on the day of their photoshoot. Our car was in this yellow color. We were the only ones that had a yellow car and the photographers loved it and they gave them the nickname. <laughs> they called it the Yellowbird and the car never got rid of that name Yellowbird. Yellowbird is today a known name for this car. In 2004, the CTR amazed everybody as could still keep up with modern day supercars like the Carrera GT, Ferrari Enzo, and Mercedes McLaren in a 0 to 100 to 0 discipline, even with 100,000 kilometers on the Tacho. That thing is just pure old school. Roof made a milder CTR2 on a 993 base with 510 horsepower in 1995, but we all know which one holds the fame. Thank you very much for watching, and Merry Christmas to everybody. Cheers. <laughs>